Well, yes, now mercifully, there has been a little late summer snowfall already on this glacier. This is obviously a magnificent and apparently robust landscape. But in fact, Switzerland is warming up twice as fast as the rest of Europe. And that has created some remarkable initiatives out here on the glaciers to protect the ice that remains and elsewhere in the country to try and take out the CO2 that we're pumping in the atmosphere to try and save the planet. A conventional rubbish incinerator just outside Zurich and possibly the birthplace of what could be a global revolution. Not here precisely, but upstairs on the roof. Using the incinerator's heat energy, this is the first place on Earth capturing and selling carbon dioxide from air. You're making money out of thin air here, aren't you? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Air into cash? and combating climate change? Yeah. Really? So the air comes in, normal Swiss fresh air. Inside each of these collectors, we have air filter material, which is highly selective, so it captures only CO2. And you can think of the filter material a little bit like a sponge. So if you would dunk a sponge in water, it would fill up with water. The same thing happens with the filter material inside there. So it fills up with CO2. Once it's fully saturated, then we close the collector, we heat it to 100 degrees Celsius and the CO2 then unsticks from the filter and can be collected. So in around three to four hours the sponge if you like inside will be saturated, they'll close down and that carbon will then be extracted and sent to be stored. Each one of these will capture around a ton of carbon in a week and it goes straight from here, from the plant right over there, piped under that field to the greenhouses. The market is right there, right now, before your eyes. And that's the delivery point in the greenhouse, the small black pipes sending in the captured CO2. And the growers here will happily tell you that since this arrangement has been going on, this circular economy in this area, their yields have gone up 20%. So revolution or pipe dream? Scale is everything. To capture just 1% of global CO2 emissions by 2025 means building 250,000 fan assemblies like the one on this roof. All carbon negative, using energy from existing plants like this prototype sited on the incinerator. Currently there are roughly 80 to 100 million cars produced annually, globally. And if we produced uh, that amount of, of CO2 collectors so to say, we would already exceed like our 1% goal. It's not something humanity has never done, right? There's a lot of knowledge and not a lot of industry around which, which could scale what, what we are using. The other major obstacle, cost. $600 to produce a ton of captured CO2 at the moment. We are very confident that we can walk down the, the cost curve um, at uh, down to this, this level of, of $100. It's not these large scientific challenges you have to solve which are unknown whether you solve it or not. It's really rather an execution thing. Like we really know what we need to do. Uh, we need to execute it. Like we need to finance it. We need good people, people to work on it uh, and simply do it. <laughs> it isn't a solution to global warming, but it could be a part of one alongside a global emissions revolution, radical reforestation, and ending our reliance on fossil fuels. Climeworks already has 14 plants across Europe, including this one in Iceland, capturing CO2 for fizzy drinks, fuel, and here, simply turning it into rock via a thermal energy powered plant. For the founder, it's personal. The mountains he loves are being rapidly altered by the climate emergency. I do a lot of alpine stuff, like climbing, skiing, and there you can really feel that things change rapidly. You're uh, seeing it personally? Yes. Those changes not immediately apparent perhaps as our train swings us ever higher into the Swiss Alps. But this landscape is more affected by the climate emergency than any other in Europe. Temperatures rising here twice as fast as the European average. Four of the past five summers, the hottest on record. 
So we've come to one of Switzerland's most famous glaciers, Mordrache. We're greeted by the fiddler on the roof of Switzerland, Felix Keller. Extreme violining. This glaciologist is staging high-altitude concerts to focus attention on the crisis. If we take a look here to this neighbor glacier, we can see that this glacier was connected four years before with this glacier. Beyond the musical gimmicks, he's actually secured millions in funding to try and stop the glacier melt by spraying artificial snow and ice onto a specific area. Our method doesn't need, the, it is not necessary that we cover the whole glacier. It's only 10% of the surface area. Just this area where we are now, it's about one kilometer square, which is needed to cover the whole summer. And our calculation shows if we do that in about 10 years, the glacier will restart to grow. Well, we'll know, but not for some years. Other glaciers have attracted even more desperate measures. The Swiss literally wrapping large sections in material to reflect away the ever-warming summers. The Mortrach itself, a national symbol of a disappearing world. Its lower levels, a forlorn tourist trail, testifying to a lost world. 1860, the glacier came here. This is the marker post, right? Yes, so in the year 1860, the glacier ended here at the river. But this is now about two miles. The glacier is way up there, two miles away now. Yes, it's incredible. Two miles or about 3.2 kilometers away. By just 1878, the glacier had receded hundreds of meters. Well, here we are. We've just come another 20 meters or so of retreat in just two years. This marker is now 1880. Shows the rapidity of it even then, doesn't it? Yes, even then it was fast, but now we have more than 40 meters a year. This means four times faster. Last year saw Switzerland's most serious drought on record. Yes, drought in this country. Glacial meltwaters provide some protection, of course, but only so much and perhaps only for so much longer. So we all need more possible solutions along the lines that Felix and Christophe propose. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, Mortrache.